sorry I asked. Sally. Just leave Sally. me alone. Look, we need to talk about this. Why? Have you got the story straight in your head now? No, it wasn't like that. Don't insult me by telling me all your lies. I stuck up for you. I was on your side. Just leave her alone, Tim. We'll just start this, Sophie, all right? I've punched you before and I've been more than happy to do it again. So get off me, or I swear. Go away. Well, you've left it a bit late, Lynn. <laughs> right, well, I I'm not promising anything. I'll do my best. Right, OK, bye. Now what? Oh, he's added another ten to the guest list. Well, I hope I've got as many friends left when I'm his age. Oh, it's just text. Steve's not turned up for his shift again. I'll try phoning him. You don't think something's happened, do you? Like what? Abducted by aliens. Well, no, he might have had an accident or a breakdown. Doubt it. He's not gone out in any of the cabs. Going straight to voicemail. He hasn't taken any of the cabs out. I know we could never accuse him of being dynamic, but this is getting ridiculous because either he has turned into the world's biggest skyver or... Or... Something's wrong. Why what? We're going missing all the time, you know, making excuses. And when he is there... Being worse than useless. You don't think he's seeing somebody on the side, do you? Oh, he wouldn't. He's got form, just saying. I don't know. Nothing gets past me. Well, when you see him, tell him he's in big trouble. Oh, yeah? You're on your wall path again? Who's for it this time? Steve's gone AWOL. Oh, it's nothing to worry about. I'm sure he's fallen asleep in a lay-by, belly full of pasties. You've not heard anything from him, have you not? Me? Why would he contact me? I mean, I'm just his partner. And she's far too busy to be chasing after him all the time, aren't you, love? Yeah, well, no good comes of letting your man go free range. Just think on it. <sighs> well, she's been ages. She promised to come and tell us how she got on. Well, maybe it's a good sign. Maybe you and Carla have got loads to talk about. For two hours? Anyway, you do know that I've got the flat to myself tonight. Mm, maybe I can run a bath, hop on in with you. Mm, not sure the joists could take it. I'm trying to be romantic here. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Talk us through this design, then. Well, it's made from pure Italian silk, Austrian lace, and the embroidery is done by hand. Sounds pricey. So what would one unit of that cost then? Um, but the silk was about £25 per metre. The lace is obviously it's quite expensive. £10, £11 per pair. Cost? Well, it's totally worth it. I mean, there's no substitute for quality, is there? I think most women want something special, luxurious. Not everyone wants polyester. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't think that you've got to go cheap and nasty to make something affordable. So, what do you think of these, then? These are a sample from our latest order. With the care label for it. 100%. Polyester, yes, and that petal is the basis of this business. The sort of undies women want to wear every day, you know? You just chuck them in the washing machine, job done. And for your information, our clients, they'd expect a dozen pair of them pants for ten quid. So, what do you reckon? You still want to work here? I mean, I wouldn't want you to feel like this woman, it. Hmm? Oh. You keep them. Thank you. Hiya. Hiya. How was your trip? Your laces are well cool. Yeah. Kick comb my favourite out of football. Amazing. I didn't know you were dead political. Just showing me support for gay footballers. Cool. It's not that I'm gay or old. If I what, I mean, be all good. Are you okay? You just seem fed up. I've just got one of those faces. Inside, I'm smiling. It's weird, isn't it? My outside doesn't match my inside either. Chippy's open. Are you hungry? I'm skin. Spend tomorrow's lunch money. Get free meals because we're puffs. So do I sometimes. Not to be ashamed of. 
We're leaving our house on Friday. Moving into the flat above Barlow's buys. I keep pretending I'm excited, but I'm not. I love our house. First time in my life I've ever had a garden. At least you've still got your family. What is wrong with me? Nothing. Don't blame yourself, Mum. All my life, over and over again, starting at secondary school with Danny O'Malley, two-time women with Jeanette Bathurst. Well, what did Tim have to say for himself? Oof. Well, he's not even denied it. No, he hasn't. I must be so stupid. No, you're not. He had us all fooled. Sally! Sally! You've got it all wrong, honest. Right. Well, you're not going to let him in, are you? Am I? Heck, I'm getting shut of him properly. Sally, please let me explain. I love you. Tim, I am warning you. Move away from the door. Sally, you've got it all wrong. Do you know what? Two more seconds and the bug brush is going through the letterbox. This you don't say. There's a couple in asking for you. Asking about Gavin. Really? Who are they? It's fortifying. Keeps the bugs at bay. Hi, I'm Annette. I understand you're asking about Gavin. That's right, yes. What is it you'd like to know? Where do I start? Do you know him? Yeah, we were an item back in the day. Listen, I hope you don't mind me asking, but... Who are you? I'm his dad. We, we lost touch years ago. It's, well, well, it's complicated. Do you watch Long Lost Family? Oh, yeah, I never miss it. Yeah, that's me blubbing like an auntie at a wedding. Well, it's like that, basically. I'm Davina McCall. Right. Yeah, well, I let him down very badly in the past, and I'm, I'm desperate for the chance to make it up to him again. Let me just grab a pen and I'll give you his address. <sighs> you haven't told her yet, have you? She won't listen. Oi! Sally, talk to me! Oh, there she is, and a slutty windass! Mum! Oh, go Sally! You want him? You can have him! What's going on? Oh, for goodness sakes, just tell her! I don't need telling, I've got eyes in my head! Sally, you've got it wrong, I love you! Oh, well, you've got a funny way of showing it. Look, I've not been playing away, just let me in! No chance! We need to talk about this in private! You are never stepping foot in my house ever again! No, she's been teaching me how to read! Liar! Why would I lie about that and show myself up in front of everybody? I can't read. Anna's been helping me. <laughs> Zidane! Thought you'd be in the pub, showing off about your flash new job. I totally blew it. Oh, come on, now. We both know you didn't, you big girly swat. No, I came across as completely clueless. Stupid. Snobby. Yeah, that's you. I went on and on about Austrian lace and silk and... You know, there's no substitute for quality. Look, you know what Grandma would say. There's always something better around the corner. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. <laughs> I'm about to go break the news to Dad. Hey, it's good to know I'm not the only failure in the family. <sighs> He's telling the truth. About the reading, anyway. What? You knew and you didn't even say anything. You told me not to. Oh, look, don't you two start, eh? All right, we'll get off then, yeah? Yeah. Give me a text if you need me, eh, Mum? I will, thanks, love. Look, Sorry I'm about your clothes. Do you 
Chat, I can't believe I lived with you for the best part of a year and I didn't notice. The thing is, Sally, I did nothing but muck about when I was at school. It wasn't cool to be a boffin. I wish I'd have known about Professor Brian Cox back then, eh? How come your parents didn't pick up on it? Didn't have any books. Well, we weren't exactly literary, but my mum did have a Jackie Collins on the go. Listen, love, I'm not going to give you some big sub story. I was lazy. I found it hard and then I gave up. The longer I got away with it, the less it seemed to matter and then it got too late. But how do you manage? I busk it. See it at the pants. Look, it's, it's a struggle. I'm not going to deny it, but you do what you do to get by, don't you? I can't believe that I've kept it to myself all of these years. Now everyone's going to know. They're going to think I'm thick as pig muck. And as for Faye, I've let her down so many times. Faye, I'll understand. I can't believe that you told Maddie and Anna, but you couldn't tell me. I thought you'd be ashamed of me. Oh, at last. How was it? Terrible. <laughs> You're doing that thing, aren't you? When you pretend it went really badly and... No, oh, she's not. It was a disaster. Tell them. All right, then, Nick, no problem. All right, bye-bye. Uh -oh. Nick's left me in charge again. Well, supervisor, aren't you? Should be able to handle it. Uh, can you start with the sympathy? It's getting a little bit too much. I'm just fed up of thinking about food wastage and balancing the books. Well, and... you're young, aren't you? You know, you should be out there being irresponsible, daft. Exactly. Filling your head full of clothes, makeup, and uh, shiny things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could help if you like, as you know, I'm a bit of a whiz behind the bar. Steve, I think you're getting yourself a little bit confused. Your pub is over the road. And I'm here. Please, about it. Why couldn't you trust me? You must think I'm so small-minded. Well, I didn't when you're feeling sorry for me and making a fuss. You know, when I found out that Sophie was a lesbian, I was absolutely fine with it. Eventually. I wasn't fine with it. I was mortified. She actually ran away because she didn't dare tell me. That was a long time ago. You're great with her now. And now you confided in Anna Windass because you didn't dare tell me. Well, I didn't mean to. That was down to Faye, really. She went and volunteered me for that school auction. I was panicking because I knew that I couldn't do it. What did you think I'd do, honestly? I don't know. No, if you'd confided in me, what did you think I was going to do? Laugh at you? Dump you? Well, if I'd have told you on our first date, I want to see you for dust. There is no right time to tell someone. Hmm. A boom shakalaka and a wama jammer. Do you want me to have a word with her? Yeah, right. You'll only make things worse. Oh, eh, uh, it's not your problem, don't you? Short-staffed. You know, one day, robots will be doing all this, waiting on tables and pouring drinks. Well, let's hope not, otherwise me and you are both have a job. Me, I won't. Sorry. Dad, leave it. Have you got a minute? Seriously, leave it. Alia uh, feels really stupid about what she said in the interview. She didn't mean any offence. Well, no offence taken, I'm sure. She's young, that's all. You must remember what it was like to be young. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Look, all I am saying is that she'd be an absolute asset to your business. Right. But I'll be the judge of that, eh? How will anyone ever take me seriously with you fighting my battles for me? Well, this is him all over. I'm only trying to help. You're lucky to have a dad like him. Loyal, willing to fight your corner. <sighs> Typical me, eh? Always seem to get everything wrong. Yeah, not everything. Cinnamon stick nearly took my eye out. So... 
When you say flaky and unreliable... Oh, not unreliable, exactly. Just likes to do his own thing. Selfish, then? Sometimes. And a bit of an opportunist as well. Oh, don't get me wrong. He can be very charming when he feels like it. And I tell you what, he is a fantastic cocktail maker. Then he'll be very welcome at our house any time he likes. Sorry, I'm gonna have to make a move. I've not done a tap of work since I got here. Oh, that, that's our fault, keeping you talking. I don't know what else I can tell you. Did I tell you that my eldest son owns a bar, Strobe Bistro? You did, yeah. The Weatherfield Gazette said his rhubarb silver bob was a triumph. My younger son owns a hair salon. I didn't get this devil make hair hair from nature, you know. No. My David did this with his own fair hands. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, thanks for everything. You've been really helpful. I hope it all works out. Here you are. Your oysters, madam. Good day at school. Same old, same old. Right, well, tell me one interesting thing that you've learned. Um, there's a wasp nest in the science block. Oh, ha, ha. Hey, our cagey said it's all kicking off next door. Oh, I actually found out. Uh, who found out what? Well, honestly, you don't miss a trick, you, do you? What's going on? Oh, well, it'll be all over the neighbourhood by now, so I may as well tell you. Mum, it's nothing for you to worry about. It's just that, well... Your dad's been struggling with his reading and writing and that, haven't they? Mm. Struggling? Yeah, they, uh, they, they... They never taught him proper at school, love. Mm. So, his, uh, his reading and writing, it's, it's just a bit under par. Mm. Oh, do you go and get that for us, love? Sally saw me and Tim together and she's accused us of having an affair. You kidding me? Nope. And she was hung out the window, screaming and shouting to all and sundry who'd listen to her. I'm so sorry about our little misunderstanding. I know I came across a, a teeny bit OTT. Well, don't worry about it, Sally. We all make mistakes. Oh. Well, thank you. That's very gracious of you. You've heard the news, then? Your dad's a dimwit. You can read. I've seen you do it loads of times. No, you think you've seen me do it. No, I have seen you do it. That time he gave that letter from school, about the trip. Yeah, but he'd already told me about the trip. I was just guessing what was in it. You see, that's what I've been doing. I've, I've been guessing. Well, what about when the time you got in touch? You sent me messages. Well, no, I had, I, had a, I had a mate help me do that. He was as bad as me, so... I've hated lying to you, Faye. I'm really sorry. You must be dead clever. What? Keeping a massive secret like that for all that time. I won't be able to do it. So you are going to forgive me, then, for being a bit unnecessary? And a slutty wind ass will have to get back to you on that one. Well, credit to your mum. She can be first when she wants to be. Um, never mind that. Why didn't you tell us about Tim? Because he told me in confidence. And why didn't you tell me that your mum thought Tim was seeing Anna? Because she told me in confidence. All right, one all. Why did I want to be a party planner? <laughs> because you fancied a new challenge? Uh, well, next time I say something like that, hit me around the back of the head with a wet fish or something. Not more problems. What does Hoedown Len want now? I'll be quicker to tell you what he doesn't want. Talk about demanding. Oh, hitting the fan then, is it? Uh, yeah, it's been one of them days. Oh. Come on then, tell Auntie Carla all about it. Well, I'll stick a glass of red in your hand first, so. <sighs> well. To be honest, I've just taken too much on. I'm running round like an idiot and getting nowhere fast. And Steve's supposed to be helping me, but he's constantly going AWOL. And just to add to your problems, we're about to run out of change. <sighs> Can't you go across the road and ask Nick? In these shoes? You're made for standing, not walking. <sighs> Night, guys. See you soon. Bye.
Thank you so much for your help, Steve. Now go home and put your feet up. Oh, I'm not a part-timer. Here, taste that. Oh, this is good. Yes, yes, it is. Mm. We're getting good at this. Steve McDonald, master mixologist. Always want to be an ologist. Steve, is this sugar all over the floor? I was trying to get a sugary rim. <laughs> Michelle, um, taste this. Sweeter than the tears of an angel. Oh, hi, Michelle. Eileen said you uh, missed your shift at streetcars. Um, this will probably uh, suit you more. It's uh, a bit more tangy. I was worried about you. Jimmy has taken on the next Bush Tucker trial tunnel of terror, but will they eat in camp tonight? Find out how he gets on and catch up on all the rest of the day's jungle action. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here next. <laughs>